So, on to the next job for the day. Uh, seeing it's still raining outside, my brother has been so kind to drop me up his tractor armor. Kind of owe him a few favours. So I said I'd give it a full going over for him. So we're going to be servicing it. I've already got one of the blades off. Um, there's three blades on this particular mower. This is actually a 22 horsepower uh, Viking uh, mower. I actually had one of these myself. It was a slightly newer model. Um, that's the older type on it. Still a fresh machine. A very good machine. Very, very good machine. Um, I traded mine in because I bought an auto mower, a Husqvarna auto mower, which is super. I might do a video on actually on that um, next spring because a lot of people ask me about them. What I do with this machine today? I'm going to do the oil filter, fuel filter, air filter, and we're going to put a new plug on it. Basic stuff. Underneath, we're going to be taking off all the blades and we're going to be giving them a good sharpening as we're just about to start here now. He was saying that there's a, quite a, a rattle coming off it. My brother has a very big garden. It's quite steep as well, so he has this machine a while. So I'm just thinking that probably one of the pulley bearings is gone in it. So I'm gonna to have to drop the deck um, and have a quick look in there and see where which bearing it is that's gone. Right, so when I'm sharpening any blade, I always finish it off with a file. Um, the disc I have on is just basically a sandpaper disc and it's gentle on it so it doesn't overheat the blade. You don't want to blue the blade because if you find any blue bits, you're actually taking the temperament out of it and it will blunt far, far more easily. Um, also, you don't want to grind your blade back too much. You don't want to have a big long slope. You want to keep your slopes nice and steep and um, because the reason for that is the sharper the point you have, the more likely it is to blunt. So if you have a long slope and you hit a stone, because your steel is that much thinner, it's going to blunt far easier. So keep your blades nice and steep. That way you have more steel there and they're gonna stay sharp an awful lot longer. Next job, we're gonna replace this air filter. Now I've realized quite quickly that he has actually got the wrong air filter for it. That's for a newer type, that's the older type. So. What I'm gonna do is take it off and just blow it out for now and he can go and get a new filter for it. So we put this back on, just leave it be for now. It's a lot cleaner. Next thing I'm gonna do is a plug. It's gonna be quite hard to get off. By looking at that plug, I'd say that's the same original plug that was in it from day one. Definitely could do it a replacing. Just wanted to make sure it's the same plug that they got. Yep, that's the right one. And one thing, a plug is very easy to replace. Just be careful, don't over tighten it. It doesn't have to be locked tight into its place. You can strip the threads out and then you're in a lot bigger trouble. I have to get the oil out. The oil is the next thing, so I'm gonna to have to turn the mower around because there's a slope in the shed. And uh, then we're gonna to have to cut this filter here and slam a new filter in and fill it with oil. A 17 mil bolt, 19 mil bolt. One thing I would say to you is when you're changing oil on these mowers, is to run it for a while, get it nice and warm. Not boiling hot, but just warm. A few minutes is definitely sufficient enough. That way the oil will come out a lot easier and a lot quicker. Another thing as well is I jacked the, this mower up. I've jacked up at the back ever so slightly um, so to get as much of that oil out as possible. And we'll stick a filter on while it's draining. When it's an oil filter, just always put a little bit of oil on the seal and it just softens the seal so you get a better sealed connection. So that's it. And again, you don't need to go mad when you're tightening the filter. Hand tightness is plenty. Don't overdo it. 
Um, it just needs to be hand tightened so it's nice and snug and that's perfectly fine. Uh, the oil has just finished here. We're gonna put the sump plug back in and we're gonna fill it with fresh oil. And we took the bonnet off because it's just a wee bit easier to access when the bonnet is off. Now the next thing we're going to look at is, he mentioned this noise, we can get Hudson out of the way here. As you see I have two spectators with me who never leave me. And a uh, wee bit shorter room as it is. And I'm just going to have to walk around them. Anyway, he mentioned this noise that's coming into it when it's rattling, it's a rattling noise when uh, the blade is engaged. He thinks there's probably bearings gone. I haven't heard the noise but I'll listen to it now in a few minutes. But first of all, I'm going to grease the front axle. Then these guys here, these wheels, are very, very loose. Uh, they won't tighten because the nut, the uh, treads has gone the nut. So I'm going to replace the treads on both of these, grease the front axles, and then we're going to listen for this noise. So just a tot, rang off. That's actually a special nut. So I'm going to have to order a couple of those. But for now, I'll just stick a 13 mil nut into it, it's going to hold it a lot tighter and then we can order these proper nuts for it. My battery went dead and I didn't film taking the decking off. I know probably a lot of these would have liked seeing that but I didn't film it, the battery went dead and I was kind of running out of time so I'll just show you what actually was wrong. So down here you can see the pulley system. Now it's slightly different, I want to show you this side force to see where it works but that's just straightforward, that just turns, the belt turns that and turns your blades on the neat in that deck but if you go the far side but this little fella here is a belt tensioner see if you pull him back it takes the tension of the belt so it allows you to lift the belt off and take the belt off quite easily uh, but there's one in here if you can see it it's way in here in the middle and I'll just show you what condition it was in so that's that pulley there it's not actually driving any of the actual blades but it's more of a tension pulley and basically the bearing had fallen out of it like that and what was happening was, as you can see the amount of plate is around that bearing. That should be all, all filled up and there should be a bearing housing around that. So it was like that and it was just wobbling around. I don't know how it managed to stay together, but it really was just battling around. It's actually sparks flying out of it, so it's definitely something that wasn't going to last much longer. So it's quite simple to fix. It's just a 10 mil bolt till it on. Um, only had to undo that. My brother was very fortunate. He was able to pick one up on his way home from work there and just drop it off to me. So I managed to get the deck totally redone. A new belt on a When you're placing something like that, you're better off putting a new belt on it just be done with it. But then you have to wonder how you get a deck off one of these yokes. You have little pins here. Um, one there, one there. And all you do, it's the same on the other side, is you remove a little clip that's on the front of them pins and you pull them pins out. But before you do that, just lower your deck down to the very bottom so that your deck wheel is, is basically on the ground. And then ever so slightly lift your deck just to take that little bit of tension off it that it's not hanging as such. So put a little bit of timber on both sides just to take a little bit of tension off it. Then pull out your four pins on both sides. The next thing you're going to have to do is pull your belt across, take your belt off, off the front pulley, which is the pulley that be attached to the engine of the actual mower. That's the only one you have to take off. And then your decking will just pull straight out. Oh yeah, I did do another little job on it as well. When the battery went, um, I removed this cover here. So I put a new air filter on it, but when I was doing that, before I took the, put the air filter on, I opened up this little screw here, and I opened up these two studs here, and took off the fuel line, and a little, little air line here as well, and I removed the carburetor, and the carburetor actually is very easy to work on. It's very careful that you connect up all the rev bars and everything back into the proper place. So just take a picture of it before you take it apart. But all I done was remove the sediment bowl. It was quite clean actually inside, but I run some carburetor cleaning fluid through it and um, blew it out with an airline, blew out all the jets with an airline, put it back together again, and that was the end of all the sputtering. It's running lovely and smooth now. I know I would have loved to get that film for you, but just the battery just died at the wrong time. My brother was just putting a little bit of pressure on me to get it finished, so I have to do a bit of work on my own strimmer um, probably in the next couple of days, and it's actually a more complicated uh, carburetor to take apart and clean, and it's probably one that you'd be more used to seeing. It's the same in chainsaws, same in them all. They're all generally more or less the same. 
So I'll be taking that apart. I might just throw that into one of my videos, just show you how to strip down, fully strip down a carburetor and clean it. If you find that something that you might interest you, um, I'm happy to put that up. The next job is not really repair, but it is maintenance, is we're going to do a little bit of a mini service on the maker machine. I do this every six months. So all we do is basically we change the liners. When I say liners, the liners are these lads here. Um, so these are the liners that fit inside that, and this is the pulsation tubes then as well. But you must keep them liners in good order because what happens is they can crack, and after milking cows for that amount of time, um, look, they're going to wear. And if it's not right and has cracks in it or has bad wear inside the liners, that's the first thing that's going to irritate the cow. The cow's going to be uncomfortable. You're going to get dirt and stuff that's going to embed into them cracks. And that's the first thing will actually make you, uh, make your quality actually drop. But every so often, I bend the liner just to the side. And if there's any water between the liner and the actual shell, um, I'd replace that. I'd know that liner was um, cracked or busted. Um, that can happen as soon as a day or two after replacing them. It can happen anytime. You can be lucky to get the six months, which normally we do, but a liner can always go anytime. So every week I just bend them down and check to make sure there's no water between the, the, between the two, and that way I know, I know that we're good to go. So I'm gonna replace all these, replace all them, and then every year I come along then and I replace the main uh, milk pipes and the main vacuum lines. They're changed every year. So these are done every six months. This, uh, a full service done every year. I do it myself. Keeping a notebook is absolutely brilliant because I always mark um, some of the rubbers that you don't change as often on top of the jars or maybe some of the bends that don't need to be changed just as often. Um, I keep a note of when they were changed so everything has a kind of a routine so you don't miss anything. Good opportunity to give that main cluster head a good wash as well now because you can get in at all the nooks and crannies that you couldn't get in when the rubbers were on. So I'm going to do that now first and then we're going to take the shells out, we're going to wash them out and then we're going to put in the new liners. Voila, finished, one done. So that's that washed unit done. I'm ready for another six months of fun. Actually, these rubbers here are actually due to be replaced now. Here in another few weeks, I always do them every month in December when milking's kind of quiet. Um, it's a great time to go over the machine and give it a complete overhaul. Because by God, when we hit January, we won't have time to be doing any changes of rubbers or any of that kind of work because we will be sleepwalking with hopefully a healthy batch of calves being calved. So that's them all done. I didn't want to bother showing each and every one of them done because you kind of get the point. Um, on the way in, I got the a little brush, it's a little kind of cone brush that fits up into them. Just spin it around a few times, just cleans them all out. But they're all clean now. We took these off as well. 
and we clean them inside. You can see um, little bits of, of stuff that gets on the threads and things just builds up after a while. We also took these jets down, we washed them out as well um, with hot water and everything's nice and clean. Now finally what I'm going to do is I'll hot wash through the machine and uh, that's going to take any contaminants that might be on the new rubbers and get rid of that um, just clean the whole thing out and then we're good to go. So that's it, my brother just picked up his tractor lawnmower there. He's over the moon to hear it run as good as it is and I'll be honest with you, I'm over the moon too. It's nice when you get something fixed and it works well and it works out and that covers me for a couple of favours. What have I got in my hand? Well that's an LED light that I'm just out picking up and I'm walking over to the case. But that's for another day. We're running out of daylight hours now so we're not going to be doing that this evening. We open the pit, I don't want to show you too much of it. If I'm smiling about what the pit looks like now that it's opened, well then I'm disguising it because I'm not happy. I am not happy. There's, uh, let's just say, I'm not going to, no actually, I'm not going to say anything. I'm not going to say anything. Wait till next Sunday. Uh, so the wee case is kitted out and it done its first full feed yesterday out of the pit. We recorded it as well, where well, most of it got recorded. So that's all coming up later on. If you want to stay in tuned and not miss anything, make sure you hit that sub button. I keep waving this around. If I don't quit waving it around, I'm going to break it. You can follow us on Facebook, Instagram. Hit that little bell on the right hand corner to notify you when our videos is up. Until the next one, we will talk to you again.